squat lobsters will have the tail tucked underneath the body, but when extended will look relatively like a lobster. And say crabs have a reduced tail um, that is always um, underneath the body and, and more tightly tucked. Um, it can't just unfurl in the same way a squat lobster does. So yeah, that, that's sort of a little bit of the morphological differences between true lobsters, squat lobsters, and crabs is, is the, the tail and how it interacts with the body. So uh, this comment mentions, mentions the langoustine tails at Trader Joe's. I was not aware that you could just go buy a squat lobster. I don't know that I would want to eat a squat lobster. Yeah, they don't. They don't market it as squat lobster. Mm -hmm. I don't know if a lot of people would just be like, oh, yeah, squat lobster. That sounds delicious. So, yeah, they, they market it as the langostino lobster. Well, even normal lobsters, but especially squat lobsters, like I know where they live and I know what they eat. Like, I don't really, <laughs> I don't know if I want to put that in my bod. They're, they're pretty tasty. I mean, I mean, what they eat is, is normally other small crustaceans and, and things like that. So those are usually the types of things that the seafood you're eating tastes good if they're eating those things. Um, the seafood that eats, say, plant matter or uh, detritus usually doesn't taste as good as the animals that might be eating other animals like how tuna tastes really good to us and, and those are eating fish and other things so it's kind of opposite of land so on land animals that uh, eat plants seem to taste really delicious to us while um, carnivores are generally not as delicious but in the ocean it seems that uh, animals that are more carnivorous or eat other animals seem to taste better. I'm not really sure why that is. I'm not a food scientist. Um, but it's something that I have observed. Well, you are what you eat, eat. Um, it says a lot of what we like from the ocean are bottom feeders. I do not eat bottom feeders on purpose. Um, actually, I don't eat a ton of seafood, by the way people in the chat some fish are bigger than you think they are like sardines are kind of large tuna are really really big just yeah, to some note tuna are just huge yeah. yeah i'm not not a fan of the bottom feeders yeah like i'm not a big fan of oysters same and they're, they're filter feeders. Oh, I just saw a fish in the Argus cam. Oh, it's gone now. Though. I don't understand how people do that, like oyster on the half shell, just like suck down the slime thing. Yes, I love that. <laughs> oh, can't. It's too much snot. I've tried it a few times just to like, Maybe, you know, the first time I didn't get a good one. Um, <laughs> Are you talking raw or cooked? A raw. And, uh, yeah, it's just not for me. I like the cooked ones more. Yeah, the cooked ones are better. But even then, definitely not my top, top food choice. Break open the shell, cover it in onion and cheese and cook it over or in garlic and uh, cook it over the campfire. Hang on. Yeah. Did you say honey and cheese? Nope. Garlic, okay. onion, and cheese. Okay. Okay, good. Because uh, I would have some follow-up questions. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if you put garlic, onion, and cheese on most anything, it's pretty <laughs> delicious. Totally. I think honey would be good, yeah. I was watching a special. I was like a, a guy that went out to wherever the farmer or, you know, the mushroom forager was and like had them do their thing and talk about it and then cooked like right where they were, like in the forest or whatever. And he went to an oyster farm and it was like perfect tide, perfect whatever. And he just like reached in, pulled it up, popped it open and like ate it. It's like, oh, it's so fresh. So fresh. 
can't can't do it yeah well especially for like oysters you'd probably want them to be sitting in some nice clean water for a while to clear out any any muck they might have been filter feeding <laughs> that's just personal uh, what is, i guess i don't know what is the weirdest seafood we've eaten this person has had sea urchin. Yeah, sea urchin can be. Yeah, I've had sea urchin. Okay. Um, also not on the top of my list of things that I enjoyed, <laughs> uh, but I tried it. I haven't ventured out into weird seafood much because seafood <laughs> seafood tends to like have all the like top allergic reaction stuff. So if I'm not gonna. You're not get gonna too risk crazy. it. Yeah. But if somebody like handed me some sea urchin, yeah, I'd eat some sea urchin. Why not? Some fugu, properly prepared. You know that the the farmed fugu doesn't have that toxin. It's only the wild caught one. So they're charging us a bunch of money for no reason. Mm -hmm. It's all about the danger aspect. Yeah. Um, but fugu really doesn't have that much taste flavor. It's more the delicacy because have to have this amazing very highly trained person prepare it for you unless uh, it's farm raised in which case you can just throw it on the slab yeah i guess so uh, but everybody will say that doesn't taste as good i don't know <laughs> i have no opinion it's not for me i have had sashimi which is you know raw fish that's fine oh yeah i love sashimi yeah. and and poke and okay. sushi I've had poke exactly once, and it was, like, fine. It was, like, a sample at, like, our Fred Meyer. But for some reason, every once in a while, I'll just be like, man, I want some poke. Mm -hmm. I never go get any. <laughs> oh. Just, like, have that feeling. I have that feeling often, um, usually on Friday afternoons, and I definitely go get poke. Friday afternoon poke. And I feel like our watch needs, like, a sticker pack. <laughs> like, Friday afternoon poke sticker. Yeah. My favorite place to get poke is Tamarez. In Honolulu? In, yeah, in, in Honolulu. Well, it's over in Aiea. Yeah. Um, but there's there's Tamarez all over the island. I used to always go to the one in Kailua because that's where I used to live. But now I don't live over there, so I don't go there very often. I want some poke. Yeah. That might be what I get when I get back home. I might have time. I think my flight's at like 9 o'clock at night or something awful. So. Oh, yeah. Well, you're definitely going to need uh, something to eat then. Airport food, not the greatest. Yeah. Last time I flew, like everything was closed too. So oh, yeah. Didn't really have a lot of options for, for food choices. I think it was just like just McDonald's. Oh. The airline that we flew on, it was a great airline, but for some reason they served they served us a chicken fajita sandwich. I don't know how you make a fajita into a sandwich, but they did. It was essentially a hot pocket and I did not eat it. But uh my uh my uh, travel buddy did. She was like it was not awesome. Yeah. It doesn't sound that awesome. It was hot, though. Yeah. yeah. Are you guys hungry? You're talking a lot about food. Yeah. I, I get hungry right before breakfast on this watch. I had some lychee jellies back here. but Yeah, I think the candy makes you more hungry. I also haven't had sugar in, like, three months. So I'm probably going to crash in a second. <laughs> <laughs> How have you not had sugar in three months? Uh, I don't like own sugar so like i've had a sweetened thing maybe with like some i don't really like to use honey either yeah just the stuff that i, I have to make my food so the stuff that i make just doesn't have added sugar in it like i'll have like a starch like a potato which is carbohydrate and therefore your body turns it into it thinks it's sugar anyway but
Aaron, what would you like us to talk about? If not food, then what? Are you talking to me? Didn't you say we're talking a lot about food? Oh, this, I was just making a statement. <laughs> that was just an observation. Um, um, I'm doing my hourly checks, so I'm, I'm out right now. <laughs> Operation stuff. Oh, sorry, you're working. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's all about food down here. It is. Who's cool. food? Where do you get food? This is the food that we're seeing, isn't it? Yeah, we are seeing some food. Doesn't look very delicious to me, but... I guess that's a matter of opinion. Maybe if I was a deep sea animal, it would look a little more tasty. I don't know. If I hadn't eaten in like three weeks, I would definitely have some of that. <laughs> yeah. You can't be picky if you're hungry, I guess. So I guess it might be a good time for another joke. <laughs> yeah, it is. What kind of waves do tiny surfers ride? Waves? Microwaves. Uh. <laughs> As a surfer, you should be ashamed. <laughs> I'm laughing really hard. It's just it's early, so you can't tell. <laughs> I always thought I would surf, but I just never have. There is surfing in Washington State. It's just cold, number one, cold. and not super near. So do a little bit of traveling to get there. How far away are you from the coast? Depends on what you mean by coast. I'm technically like 15 minutes away from the coast, but we're in. I'm in like the little hook. So to get to like ocean, ocean, I have to go. It's like what? Two and a half, three hours, maybe. Ocean, ocean. You know, if I go down to ocean shores or something. That's a, a lot of people surf at ocean shores, although there are other places. Where I am, I can easily kayak, but I live in an apartment, and I have no place to put a sea kayak, so... Unless I, like, string it up on the back porch, which I wouldn't want my stuff just, like, left outside. That's totally what I do. My kayak is out on my, my lanai. Yeah? Yeah. I thought about it. My friend has this uh, system. It's in her garage, but um, like hers is kind of like on hangers. Mm -hmm. So it's like up, off from things. And I could hang a kayak on my back porch. I don't know. You can also rent, too. We rented a canoe the other day and tried to teach our dog to canoe, but he got a little excited by the seals. Mm -hmm. So it was a bit of a bit of an event. <laughs> you tried to teach your dog to canoe. Aw. You could also get an inflatable kayak. No, I refuse. I also refuse to get the uh, the collapsible ones. Yeah, the, the full up ones. Yeah, I don't trust that I'm at like, all. Oh, an origami <laughs> kayak? Okay. Actually, that one looks kind of cool. I know that one, uh, but like the ones that are like in sections. Like, oh you, like, yeah, the snap three it together. sections yeah. that snap together. Yeah. I don't like that idea. They make surfboards that way too. I'm oh like, really? Oh, I don't know if I. It seems like it would mess with like the below. Yeah, I don't know. I've uh, never tried one, but I have seen them. Trevor, we can totally rent kayaks. There's a billion places to rent kayaks, but um, I kind of want to just, like, get up at, like, 5 o'clock in the morning and just go launch my own kayak. Like, I don't want to have to worry about that. We have tons of launch places. How often do you hit the surf, Megan? Um, every so often, maybe like once a week. It used to be a little more often when it was just across the street, but now I have to strap things to my car, so oh, I yeah. always get out there. Uh, I like to surf right after work, but 
if the traffic is bad and I'm not going to be able to get there in enough time, it's, it becomes more difficult in the winter because sun sets a little bit earlier. And I don't like to surf after sunset. No, piercing. why not? What's wrong with surfing after sunset? It's dark. <laughs> okay, fair, fair enough. That is. A we are safe surfers here. Yeah. Also, sharks like to feed at about that time, so it's it's best not to take any risks. Sharks like to surf at that time. Cool. They like to eat stuff. <laughs> but sharks don't really eat people. They don't eat people, but like they sample people. <laughs> but say if. Uh, if you're hungry, sometimes you bite first and ask questions later. So apparently, um, just looking at like shark behavior, you know, we were like, maybe sharks like don't see well and they just like need to bite things to like see what they are. But um, I don't remember what type of shark it was, but they observed like how they actually like hunt like seal and that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. And it's totally different than when they like take a bite out of a human. So they're like, maybe they are just like... Maybe their like mouths are like hands. Yeah, well they don't have real hands. Yeah. They don't even have fake hands. Oh my gosh, I would love to see a picture of like a shark with like two tiny little like plastic little hands. hands. <laughs> oh my goodness. That would be ridiculous. I might have to make that happen. Alright, you ready for another joke? No, but tell me anyway. Yeah, I go for it. What does a kraken eat? Fish and ships. Oh. Uh, that's actually not bad. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I should be writing all these down. Maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> not the jokes. Oh. I do. I do make notes on like what we find and stuff. Yeah, it's kind of like the um, the giant red octopus that we have in Washington State. They're super duper friendly and like love to play, but like their play is not not play that is safe for humans. So. Yeah, they're definitely very strong. They like to give you hugs and like see what's under your mask. Like, what's that face underneath there? <laughs> what are you doing? Let me just put those suckers here. Meanwhile, you're turning blue. This thing blue. in your mouth that you need to breathe. <laughs> Someday, an octopus is going to hitch up its skirts and just walk out of the ocean and we are all doomed. Oh no, somebody joined us at the Kraken joke. They wish us the best day. We will have the best day ever. Ooh, have you tried foil surfing? No, I haven't tried foil surfing. It does look like fun though. Also very dangerous. Um, people riding the foils will go pretty fast and some people like to zoom in and out of the lineup. Uh, there have been a couple close calls, and I know that uh, in, on some occasions, uh, collisions with a foil can result in some very major injuries. So definitely be safe if you're out there surfing your foil.
look at Team Blue Water giving good life advice. Trying my best to give good life advice. We were giving kind of a <laughs> not so great advice last night, so. It's because Coralie's not awake yet. What about me? <laughs> Nothing. The ship's happily in position on Seamount 2, well, the Seamount proper summit. We're just waiting for the vehicles to fall in. Awesome. We're halfway there. That was quick. Oh, we're halfway there. It feels quick, but uh, vehicles will slow down a little bit right before they get there. But yeah, the quicker we move, the more time we have on this extra seamount, the, the summitiest summit of the summits. Most summitiest? Yeah. That's what I said, I'm sticking to it. Oh, what was that? Little buddy just floated by. It was so fast I didn't see it. 
was white and pointy shaped. Mm, could have been almost anything. <laughs> really, I feel like you identify on like way less than that half the time. Just like <laughs> magically know. I just know. Uh, well, it comes to water column stuff. I yeah have a harder time. Sometimes people will describe fish to me in words. I'd be like, well, it was it was a silver fish and it was fish shaped. What kind of fish was it? I don't know, could be anything. What that sounds like a lot of it information there. <laughs> it's shaped, so it's like not like a shark, okay. Yeah, well I could tell you what it's not. I know what it isn't. All right, I guess it's time for another joke. <laughs> what do you call a fake koi fish? What? A decoy. Oh, that's actually clever. Here, I was trying to figure it out. <laughs> What's the, uh, something a fakus? Caliphacus? Yeah. And there really is no calorealist? There is no calorealist. Only Caliphacus. Missed opportunity. The next time we discover a new stock sponge, we can call it calorealist. I still can't get over Flota and Swimma. Yeah. We're we're Pokemon now. We're naming <laughs> Pokemon. Oh, uh, there there is a um acorn worm called Yoda. Aw. Yoda Purparata. It's purple, and they, they call it Yoda because it has, uh, it's like head portion looks a little bit like Yoda's head in shape. Um, only in shape, not in color or wrinkliness. Oh, do I see a little bit of bottom? Yes, you do. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Forty minutes to spare. Look at that. That was much quicker than I thought. See, you're bringing the negativity. We don't need that here. Sure. Yeah. Wow. Well, welcome back to the bottom of the main main summit of this seamount. We have explored a little bit of a ridge. We made a little hop, skip, and a jump over to the main part of the seamount. And then we made our way up to sort of a, a mini summit. And this is the tallest summit, widest summit of the seamount F. We are going to explore here until I think about 6 a.m. And then we'll be leaving bottom to recover by 8. Last joke of blue water. What does an octopus wear to a formal dinner? What? A coat of arms. <laughs> yuck, yuck, yuck.
Seems like a bit more sediment on this summit right here. I have spotted a crinoid and a glass sponge. Looks like there are some bamboo corals as we're getting closer. So the uh, ship's kind of creeping up on what we think might be a little more somebody, not sure. Um, but if you want us to stop and like really start exploring here, we can, or we can uh, let the vehicles... Well, I mean, they're going to get pulled either way, but yeah. I could stop the ship from moving if you want. No, well, let's just keep moving. I, I'm just, uh, just going to call out things as we see them. Okay. Coralie, is there any interest of grabbing one last rock before we leave, or are we good on rocks? We could. All the Niskins are filled, but we could grab a rock if we wanted to. We want to. Okay. <laughs> That's a big one. Yeah. Got some pretty large bamboo corals here. A little fish. Looks like a little kumba, a rat tail fish. And the family Macoridae. And you're still, um, you're on USBL, and once we settle out, we'll get back to the EVL track. All right. There are quite a few bamboo corals in this area. They seem to be on boulders. What's that? Tiny fish. Oh. It's a fish, not a sea cucumber? Lots of tiny fish. That is a sea cucumber. We also have some really thin-looking corals, crinoids. There's a metallogorgia melanotrichos with its associate snake star, Ophiocreus oedipus, unbranched bamboo. I really like that Queen Anne's lace coral. What's that one called? It was on the right. Kind of very delicate. This one? Uh, nope. I want to see it again. I'll points it out. Got some stalk sponges. Those look like they are sacocalyx. Those. There are quite a few bamboos. It. That's on his pit.
nice comment here. Our YouTube streams, uh, this person, it's one of the main reasons they wanted to go into marine biology. Thank you. Another big one. I feel like I see the shadow before I see the coral. All right, testing your power of identification through words again, Megan. This question is asking, how deep can we find a cone-shaped stalk sponge? A cone shape, so like a vase shape? I would guess so. Um, how deep will we see those? Oh, oh pretty deep. Uh, definitely past 3,000 meters in depth. We'll see those types of uh, vase-shaped euplex helid sponges like Dictyalis. Usually, as we get deeper and deeper, you might only see some of those carnivorous sponges, those clatterized sponges. Um, you might see demi sponges that are encrusting. So, sponges do go pretty deep. Oh, there's a little fish. Another rat tail fish, likely Kumba. Okay, it ships in within 20 meters of their goal, so we're almost, and you're almost close enough that we're in like normal okay. kind of stepping configuration. Ooh, I love that color. That is a proisocrinus type of sea lily, so stocked crinoid. I've got some refinement in the question. I guess it's an upside down cone, like a, uh, like a oh, traffic cone shaped. Like a traffic cone. Um, can't think of any traffic cone shaped sponges off the top of my head that we see regularly down here. Mainly the ones we see are more vase shaped or sort of leafy looking. That one right there, Megan, left of the screen. Oh, this one? Yeah. Yeah, that's the Metallogorgia melanotrichos. Really like that. Yeah, that one's really pretty. It kind of looks like a little umbrella. Maybe Tortoro would carry it. Tortoro. <laughs> yeah, you know, like Tortoro would come to the deep sea somehow. Nobody knows. Just shows Tortoro up. probably has friends down here. Probably. You know, forest spirits and ocean spirits. Oh my gosh, cat whale bus. That would be awesome. Yay.
So we have this bamboo coral. It's got a couple of those Sathometra rhinoids on it. And then that yellow stuff is not bamboo coral. That is a parazoanthid, so a type of coral that grows on is top it? of other corals. Oh, here's a cool fish. fish. So we have a nice, I think we're nicely paralleling. Looks like a coral Along the ridge. Um, once we settle this out, fish. I'd like to get you back on DVL, and then I might bring the ship a to a little star. more south and west so that we can make sure we're maybe catching the top of the ridge in okay. exploration. So yep. we'll be kind of going this way and whatever we can do to do this. Cool. Awesome. Yeah, sounds great. Hey, look, it's an inverted traffic cone. Is this is this an inverted traffic cone? No, it's a vase. <laughs> Another one of those rugged relic glass sponges. And we are seeing a nice dense community of these bamboo corals. So these corals are likely pretty old. Bamboo corals can live hundreds of years. And to really age the coral, you need to measure the width of the base. All right. Ship and if we were done. able to collect a base, Clear someone interested in that. dating it would be able to tell You're us exactly a spot where how you old hold for a little that bit colony is. Okay. Uh, yeah. Seems now is good. Now it's fine. Question in the chat: If any of us identify with astronauts, uh, we feel more like early space pioneers. So that's an interesting question because um, deep ocean research is actually used to um, make theories about how um, space research okay. should be conducted. Because it's the same kind of like harsh, not for humans environments, a lot of remote operations. So yeah, there is correlation. Correlation. <laughs> yes? Nope. <laughs> Can we look at this one? I want to go to space. Or is it a little bit too awkward here? Sorry? Ma Megan, can you circle that again? Oh, oh yeah. sorry. I was just out of view. Yeah, it was that sparse, just only two branches. Ah, uh, okay. Let me get around this coral in front of me. All the corals here are so big. Yeah. All right. Uh, Megan, team, I'm going to, if it's okay with you, we're going to start Zoom stepping kind of 230 to bring the ship a little bit, a little more south and west at the same time so that there's enough leash for Antonella to kind of move back and forth across what we think is this ridge. Okay. You guys all right if I call in a move? Yep. It's going to be 230. And, uh, yeah, 230. It's going to go this way. Thank you. What would you do, Trevor? One, six, five. Six, five. That's very southerly. I think the slope is ahead of Antonella right now. And we also want to be moving in this direction too to kind of go along it. How about two zero zero? Bridge Nav, can we get a five zero meter step two zero zero?
As we keep moving along here, I feel like the corals are getting even more dense. We found the place to be. It is. It is the place to be. This isn't the first time we've seen dense bamboo coral uh, groupings at the tops of seamounts. What's that one that looks like the telephone cord on the left there? Yeah, that's probably some type of Aritagorgia, but if okay. we have the time availability, it might be good to check that out. Yeah, we can try to get yep. over there in a, in a minute. Telephone cord? Might be slightly out of our reach. It's pretty far away up yeah. on the top. It looks like um, all the branches of that coral are, are concentrated at the top of your telephone cord. And it, it's oh, very tightly spiraled. So oh, it might yeah. be an Aritagorgia bella. So yeah, I totally missed that top fluffy bit here, right? Yeah. yeah. I see what you're seeing. Oh, I can't really get over there. No. That's all we get. Uh-oh. Yeah, the Aritagorgia magnus brellis has large loops um, in that stock. So like large spirals and the Aritagorgia bella has more tightly coiled spirals and all the branching seems to happen in the first few spirals near the very top of the colony. So like this one here is probably something similar, Aritagorgia bella. See only maybe three whorls. That one was really interesting, uh, how many spirals that were in that stock of the coral. Out of all the seamounts we've been surveying on this um, on this expedition, which is the tallest? Do we know? I don't know. I lost track. <laughs> I could yeah, check I it later in blue water if you want, if you remind me. All right. Here's another sparse brancher, bamboo coral. Can we check that out real quick? Yeah. I don't think there's any more up. Yeah, I think we're so I think we're just topping out now, yeah. So we can uh definitely do westward. Well south south. Sure, yeah. Yeah, I think Kirk's like right on top of the ridge now. Yeah. It's probably Let me just drop 20 that. meters from Argus or so. Can you zoom in, please, Aaron? It's going to be far away. Bridge nav. So it looks like yeah, it branches right manage. away at the base. Um, can we of this change coral? our bearing to. And then it doesn't branch again. 250 or, or I'm sorry, 245. Uh, five zero is fine and keep the transfer speed. You got it, thanks. Oh, that's a gorgeous view of the polyps. Really? Awesome, thank you. And then as, as we were zooming back out, I could see that there's even more bamboo corals in the distance. So many bamboo. 
the forest, a bamboo forest. And we have a question. Uh, why aren't we taking our time to zoom in to each and every one of these corals? Um, that we would never get anywhere. <laughs> yeah, so, we're on the time clock on this one, right? Yep, we are getting close to the end of our dive. So my plan is to try to see as much as we can see. So this colony is right that, here. Is that fit starfish feeding on a coral? Is yeah, that that is? right down here, um, there's a starfish know, feeding oops. on that coral. Um. Yeah, I think so. So we can see. But just for some scale, because I've got some questions in the chat. So all of okay. um, oh. instead of going back and forth. Gotcha. Okay. So all of the ROV stats can be found on our webpage, nautiluslive.org. Um, if you go to that page, you'll see to the right. Um, section for data and you will see both uh, pictures of both ROVs and you can just click on one to see. Hercules is like seven feet tall and the lasers that you see on the screen are always 10 centimeters apart. So that's giving you a bit of scale as to how big these guys are. Are you up for a zoom on this big one? Yeah, this big uh, reddish tinged bamboo coral is different than all the other ones that we're seeing. It's uh, very cool. So we're yes. probably seeing a, a, at least three different species Etna. of bamboo, oh, maybe even Sorry, more. Passed it. I was asking if you're up for a zoom on that big one, but you passed it. Oh, the big one. You gotta um, go back that way anyway. Yep. I was just trying to get around it. Would this be considered a bamboo forest, Megan? I would call it a bamboo forest. Okay. Go ahead for your zoom. So we're getting a nice good view of the polyps now and I would like to check out where the branching is happening. Is Ooh. it nodal or internodal? Sorry. I think it might be um, internodal. Let me know when you're kind of stable and I'll go back in. I don't know that we'll we're not going get to get there. it are we? pretty far. That's fine. Speaking of those polyps. Oh, I can go. see it now. Yeah. Closer to the base where the, the branching is a little larger. It's always easier to see. So it looks like it is internodal. And I think that's what we were calling uh, internodal red for now. Because uh, it sort of has a little bit of a red tint to it. What if you find one that's internodal and completely red? Is that like internodal super red? Yeah, probably. We, we we give these corals different names just to try to differentiate them in our mind because they look different. And as you can see, that particular coral colony we were just looking at looks much different compared to the other ones around it. So it's it's important to make some of these morphological distinctions um, because if we collect a sample and we get a good ID for that particular animal, we can go back and update our annotations to reflect that change. Now, if we called everything just bamboo coral, it would be very difficult to go back and make that change. We would have to basically just re-annotate everything because you wouldn't. It would, you know pose a problem to just change everything because obviously here we're seeing a lot of different species. Um, so we want to capture that diversity and we do that by giving little monikers, little placeholder names to some of the animals that don't have, um, a full identification yet. Say again. And uh, we saw okay. those polyps. Um, what question is what sort of nutrients are the polyps filtering yeah. down at these depths, generally speaking? So they're grabbing these little white particles out of the water column. That's that marine snow. Um, the there, there must be a lot of food down here to have so many large corals. That's fine. I see a lot of snow blowing around. Mm -hmm. um, we see a lot of stars entangled in uh, the bamboo coral there. Um, are they feeding on the coral, or are they eating smaller fish? 
Yes, so uh, there are sea stars that feed on bamboo corals. So I've seen a number of them in the branches of these bamboo corals, and they'll just make their way and nom on the coral. Uh, and this process can take quite a bit of time. They're not very fast eaters, but once they've found a, a nice, delicious coral, they usually hang out there for a while. And once that tissue has been removed, the sea star has eaten it, that's when you see other things coming in, like these zoanthids, or um, anemones, or hydroids, that start to colonize on that bare skeleton of the bamboo coral. Okay. Got a shout out to Aaron R. from Port Angeles. Roger. Oh, cool. Hi, Port Angeles. The whole, the whole town. <laughs> I said, hi, Port Angeles. The whole town. The whole town. <laughs> Oops, sorry. Say again. Roger. They're asking if they have access to um, some of the uh, substrate uh, they have that looks similar to what we have here. What should they build with it? I don't know exactly what what you have there. There's this is a what kind of substrate are we looking at, Coralie? Yeah, so we're looking at basalt, and it has a coating of ferromanganese crust. So you likely don't have, if you have that source from somewhere above the ocean, it's likely not that. So I'm not sure what you have there. I mean, in terms of building, you could you could build like a little rock wall for your garden. It might look really nice with this type of rock. If you happen to have some. If you guys want to sample a rock, I don't know, these look somewhat loose. Oh, well, it's up to you. You're the one who's studying them. I, I don't care. You don't care? <laughs> I'm going to sample a rock. <laughs> yeah, that's what I want to hear you say. Sample a rock here. Don't take this away from the ROV pilots. <laughs> I've been looking for some biology to sample. Yeah, we're going to get a little ahead of Argus first, and then we'll... Uh, do that. What kind of bio are you looking for? Um, anything on our wish list. Sea cucumbers. Um, I think we've got quite a few sea cucumbers. Ideally, at this anywhere point, we fine. would be collecting Sorry? sea cucumbers from fine. shallower okay. depths. I'll just go up here to the right. Maybe. Sounds good. Okay, do you want do you want to pick a rock or do you want me to pick a rock? Uh you can pick a small rock. Small rock. That is mostly black. Mostly black. While the pilots do their thing. Uh, I'm gonna a hold ship only because I also want to change our bearing. Is that cool? Roger. Bridge nav, hold position. There's an excellent question in the chat from Megan while the pilots do their thing. Is there something that eats the skeletons of coral? Something that eats them. Um, we see a lot of stalks hanging out. Sponge stalks, anyway. I, I, I don't know. Uh, I don't. I don't think there's anything that eats like the Sorry, skeletons over of there bamboo coral. Pushing anything. But the bamboo mm -hmm. coral skeleton. Um, the white parts, at least, are made out of calcite, which will eventually dissolve. 